All right, this is the video for the final exam review for Math 137. We're looking at the day one material, and we're going to be doing just a few examples from each piece um, just to give you an idea of kind of where you should be going with each problem. So for number one, it says find the exact radian measure of the angle. So I'm going to do B, so we take negative 160 degrees, and to change degrees to radians, you have to cancel degrees out. That means degrees need to be on top here and on bottom here. So we're going to divide by 180, but we're going to multiply by pi. So that's our radians up top. So pi over 180 will turn this into that. So um, I see a zero can cancel immediately on top and bottom. So that's negative 16 pi over 18. And we need to reduce that by dividing both of them by 2. So negative 8 pi over 9. The directions did not say that we had to put this between 0 to 2 pi, so we're just leaving it as is. For number 2, we're going to be finding the exact degree measure of an angle, so we're going the opposite way. So I'm going to do A part here, and we're going to be canceling out the radians. That means we need the pi to be on the bottom. So we're going to be multiplying by 180 degrees over pi radians. The pi's are going to cancel out. And then 5 goes into 180. We want to remember we don't have calculators on this portion. So 5 goes into 180 three times. That's 15 with 3 left over. So that's going to be 36. So this is going to be 9 times 36 degrees. So then we want to do 36 times 9. It's 54. 27 plus 5 would be 32. So 324 degrees. And again, they didn't specify that it had to be between 0 to uh, 360, but this is, this is fine as it is. Okay, so let's look down at number 3. We have that an angle theta is in standard position with a point P um, e, x, y, which lies on the unit circle. So we know that its radius is 1. It's on its terminal side, and we want to list the six trig functions of the angle, and I'm going to do B on this one. So we have the point 24 over 25 and negative 7 over 25, and in this scenario, um, remember if this is on standard position, that would be in quad x is positive, but y is negative. That's going to be in quad 4. So if you think about it, this is kind of giving you a triangle here on a unit circle, which this is a 1. Um, the x is 24 over 25, and the y value is negative 7 over 25. Now, if you know it's on the unit circle, we already do. That means that the sine and the cosines come directly from the ordered pair because the radius is 1, so the hypotenuse is 1. So the sine is the y value, so that's negative 7 over 25. The cosine is the x value, so that's 24 over 25. Tangent is just opposite over height, or excuse me, over adjacent, so that's negative 7 over 25 over 24 over 25. You can multiply both top and bottom by 25, so that's negative 7 over 24. Once you have the first three, you can take all three of those and flip them to get your reciprocals. So cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, secant is the reciprocal of cosine, and uh, cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. So there are the six trig ratios for number three. All right, for number four, we're going to be listing the exact values of the expression. So this is just seeing if you know your unit circle. So I'm going to do C and E. So for C, we're doing tangent of negative 5 pi over 6. So remember, a negative angle, we move in the clockwise direction. And pi over 6 uh, is a 30-degree angle, so there's two of them in each quadrant, and then they're on the actual axes. So this is negative pi over 6, negative 2 pi over 6, negative 3 pi over 6, negative 4 pi over 6, negative 5 pi over 6. So it's right here. And at negative 5 pi over 6, this is a 30-degree angle. So that means this is 60, and that makes this the negative 1 half. This is negative square root of 3 over 2, and this is 1. So tangent, remember, is opposite of the reference angle, which is right here, over adjacent. So that's going to be negative 1 half over negative square root of 3 over 2. 
the negative over negative becomes positive and it's the uh, twos are going to cancel so it's one over square root of three or square root of three over three when you rationalize um, for this one secant of 120 degrees remember that that's really one over cosine of 120 degrees because it's the reciprocal so if we think about where 120 degrees is that's in quad two and it leaves you with a 60 degree angle to get to 180 so that's a square root of 3 over 2 this is the negative 1 half and this is a 1 um, and then this would be cosine is the negative 1 half so this is 1 over negative 1 half which we multiply the bottom uh, and top both by the reciprocal and we just get negative 2 all right we did both identities in class so I'm going to look at number 6 Part A, we need to get that cosine 3 theta by itself first. So we're going to add 1 and then divide by 2. So we're asking when is cosine of 3 theta equal 1 half? So think for a second, when is a cosine equal to 1 half? First of all, cosines are positive in quad 1 and quad 4. And only when the x value is 1 half is when we have a cosine of 1 half. So if we think about that, that means that these are square root of 3's over 2. So this is a 60 degree angle. So that one would be pi over 3 and this one would be at 5 pi over 3. Uh, but the problem is that is for a, just a regular old alpha at that angle. We have 3 theta in here, so we need to set each of those equal to 3 theta and solve. They also said find all the solutions, so we need to think about all rotations of this. So this first one is 3 theta equals pi over 3 plus 2 pi n, where n is an integer. And the second one is 3 theta equals 5 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. And when you divide by 3, you can really think about multiplying by 1 third. So I'm getting one answer is that theta is pi over 9, because 3 times 3 on the bottom, plus 2 thirds pi n. So there's one answer. The other one would be 5 pi over 9, because we're going to multiply everything by 1 third again, plus 2 thirds pi n. So there's both of my sets of all coterminal angles. Um, well, these were the coterminal angles, and these are all the angles that when you times them by 3, they would give you the ratio you need so that the cosine is 1 half. Okay, for number 7, it says find the exact angle in radians which makes the expression true. So this has to do with looking at um, what's inside and what's outside here. Because we're looking at cosine of 5 pi over 4, you can think about where that's located. 5 pi over 4 is in quad 3. So here's 5 pi over 4. And that has a cosine value of negative square root of 2 over 2. Over 4. Now, so we know that this is negative square root of 2 over 2. The problem is the outside is going to ask when do you have an angle that is in the domain of the inverse of cosine that has a value of negative square root of 2 over 2. Well, cosine inverse is only defined in quads 2 and quads 1. So this is where cosine inverse is defined. Okay. So if you're looking for a place where you have the same exact sine value as 5 pi over 4, it's going to be in quad 2. That's where you're going to have a negative square root of 2 over 2 still for your x value. So this would be the angle in cosine inverse that has the same ratio as this angle right here. So that would be at 3 pi over 4. So within the domain of our cosine inverse, the same ratio occurs at 3 pi over 4. All right, let's look at number 8. It says find the exact value of the expression. So um, I actually, I'm going to do probably A and B because I know that students miss these more than um, some of the other problems. So this one right here says that sine inverse is negative square root of 3 over 2. 
you have to remember that sine inverse is defined in quads one and four because that's where sine is positive and negative just once each um, and that gives us a one-to-one -one function so in these two situations a negative square root of three over two for sine is going to occur down here at um, we're talking about quad four and our y value would be negative square root of three over two since it's a sine our x value is the one half and this is one so this happens at what angle well that would happen at a 60 degree angle here so i don't really care about the radians just yet um, this says what is the cosine at that location so since we have our location correctly the cosine here is just one half it's the x value so essentially you're using this to locate the correct place uh, for your angle in the quadrant that the inverse is defined in, and then you're finding the adjacent over hypotenuse, which is one half over one. So let's look at another one. Um, this one says cosine inverse is negative square root of two over two. We already know that cosine inverse is defined in quads one and two, and for it to be negative, it has to be in the quad two and it's a negative square root of 2 over 2 and that means we're in a 45 45 90 triangle this would be positive square root of 2 over 2 because that's a y value that's positive and this is 1 so this is a 45 degree angle it's just so we can see what the triangle looks like the tangent of this is just opposite over adjacent for mine so opposite uh, is square root of 2 over 2 adjacent is negative square root of 2 over 2 so this is negative 1 so we figured out what our location was using our inverse and the sign that we saw here and where that was restricted for that and then we found the tangent of the triangle that we drew and that's it for that one okay for number nine we're looking at a triangle that we know isn't a right triangle because they did tell us that gamma is 90 degrees and we want to find the remaining parts of this triangle so if we draw a picture of a right triangle and I know it's not the best picture. Um, this would be C or gamma, and this is A and B. They told us that alpha, the angle at A, is 30 degrees, and B is across from the big B, so that's 9. Um, what we know, I'm going to do what we know already in red, is that if this is 30 and 90, then this has to be 60. So we know that beta is 60 degrees. Um, when you do a 30, 60, 90 triangle, be careful about the square root of 3 because a lot of people get just hung up on it going on just one side. In a 30, 60, 90, the side across from 30 is always kind of considered like side, uh, let's just call it side P. I'm just using a letter we don't use often. The 90 degree angle side is always double P and the 60 degree one is P on the square root of 3. Well, here's the thing. We are missing the square root of 3 from that 9. So imagine setting that in equal to 9 is p square root of 3. Then if you divide by square root of 3, that will tell you what the side p is, and that's across from 30. So it's 9 over the square root of 3, which I would rationalize and make that 9 square root of 3 over 3, which is 3 square root of 3. So this side right here is 3 square root of 3 because of this relationship right here. And then we double that to get the C side. So that's going to be 6 on the square root of 3. Now, if you're not sure if those answers are right, you can, since this is a right triangle, you can always plug them into Pythagorean theorem and see if you've got everything good. So let's check that real quick. So those are my three missing pieces. So if I put this into Pythagorean theorem, that would be 9 squared plus 3 times 3, or square root of 3 squared equals 6 square root of 3 squared. 9 squared is 81. This would be 9 times 3, so that's going to be 27. This is 36 times 3, and that would be 108. And this is also 108, so that does come out to the perfect um, Pythagorean th uh, identity. Okay, let's talk about number 10. We did C and D in class, so we're going to look at B just to do a different variation. We're trying to do 5 times this uh, A vector and three, minus 3 times the B vector. So essentially, you can just do, think of this as really distributing and combining like terms minus 3 times negative 2i plus 8j so that's going to be 30i minus 20j 
plus 6i minus 24j. And if we put together our like terms, I get 36i minus 44j. Okay. Um, and just to remind you, if you're ever looking for a unit vector, it's always the vector, each component, so A1, A2, gets uh, divided by the magnitude of the vector. So just remember, that's how you find a unit vector. And when you find a unit vector, you then multiply it. You can multiply it by whatever you want because it's got a vector magnitude of 1. So if you wanted a magnitude of 7 in the opposite direction, you multiply by 7 and by a negative sign because of opposite direction. So whatever you find for this, you would just multiply it by negative 7 to get the new vector. So just as a reminder, even though we did that in class. Um, let's look at 11. Uh, I believe we did A in class, so we're going to talk about B. This says express the following complex number in trigonometric form R cis theta. So you need a radius and you need an angle location. This is quad 3 because they're both negative. Because remember, when you're doing uh, complex numbers, the x-axis is the real numbers and the y-axis is the imaginary part or the complex part. Um, so for this, this is negative 7, negative 7 as an ordered pair essentially. So negative 7 for y, negative 7 for x. Uh, you can use Pythagorean theorem. That's going to be 49 plus 49 and that's going to give you 2 on the square root of um, 7. So 7 on the square root of 2. So this is a 45 degree angle here. So my r is 7 on the square root of 2. My theta is between, has to be between 0 and 2 pi. This would be 5 pi over 4. So in cis theta notation, this is 7 square root of 2, cis 5 pi over 4. And that's it for that one. Okay, so we're looking at number 12. Uh, we're going to do b. We're supposed to find the following things. Multiply the two complex numbers together, divide them, and then cube the first one. So when you multiply two complex numbers together, you multiply, if they're in cis notation, you multiply their radiuses together, so 5 times 10, and then it's cis, and then this is kind of like exponent laws, but you add the uh, thetas, so 3 pi over 4 plus 7 pi over 6. So we want to work this out, so 5 times 10 is 50, we will need to get a common denominator for 3 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 6. I would use 12. So we can multiply the first fraction by 3 over 3. So that would be 9 pi over 12. And the second one by 2 over 2. So that's going to be 14 pi over 12. And that's going to be 23 pi over 12. Now, we have to make sure that that's between 0 to 2 pi. Since our denominator is 12, double it for the to see if you, what your 2 pi would be, which would be 24 pi over 12. So this is actually within the 0 to 2 pi. Okay, for the division, for z1 divided by z2, you divide the radiuses and we subtract the angles. I'm going to go ahead and write the angles in their common denominator form. So that would be 1 half cis of, let's see, 9 minus 14 is negative 5 pi over 12. Now that is not in the 0 to 2 pi because that's a negative 5 pi over 12. So you want to take negative 5 pi over 12 and you want to add 2 pi to it, which means 24 pi over 12. So that's going to be 19 pi over 12. So this is 1 half cis 19 pi over 12. And then the last one is we're going to cube just the first one, the z1. When you're cubing it, you want to make sure that you cube the r. So I'm going to do it right here because I ran out of room. So we're going to have uh, r1 is 5, so 5 cubed. And then you multiply the angle by 3, So since we're cubing. So 3 times 3 pi over 4. So this is going to be 125 cis, and that's 9 pi over 4. That is bigger than 2 pi, so if we subtract 8 pi over 4, that's 2 pi from that, it would just be pi over 4. So 125 cis pi over 4. So that's the z1 cubed. Okay, 
So let's move on to 13. This one you're just supposed to tell me if uh, this is a circle, a vertical parabola, horizontal parabola, ellipse, or hyperbola. And you should be able to tell that just by looking for what's squared and what are the numbers in front of that. So if you have an x squared and a y squared and they're both the same number, it's a circle. So out of all of the ones I see here, E is going to be the circle because they're both positive. There's an x squared and a y squared and they have the same number in front of them. If you have uh, both x squared and y squared and they're both positive but they have different numbers in front of them like A, that is an ellipse. If you have an, a, uh, an x squared and a y squared but one of them is negative, that's when you have a hyperbola. So that would be D. x squared and y squared both exist but one of them is positive and one of them is negative. So that's a hyperbola. And then we get left with the parabolas. So with the parabolas, they only have one of the variables squared. And if it is an x squared, it's like a normal parabola, which means it's either up or it's going to be down, depending on if you're positive or negative. If you have a y squared, you're going to be either right or left. Okay, so that's only for parabolas. They're the only ones that kind of follow that orientation. So, and that's because you only have a single variable squared. So this one has the x squared, so this is what we call a vertical parabola. And this one is the y squared only, no x squared, so this one is the horizontal parabola. Okay. That gives us number 14. Uh, this is the, I call the game where you go around in circles. Um, you want to plot where this would be on your um, kind of xy axis. And we're looking at 7 pi over 6, which is in quad 3, because 6 pi over 6 would be pi. So this is 7 pi over 6, and it has a radius of 4. And essentially what you're doing is you're figuring out the location of these angles, and then if it's a positive 4, it's going to stay where it's at. If it's a negative 4, it reflects the vector the opposite direction. So essentially, if you look at these, this is set up so that only one of these passes per column, because they each are using the same uh, combinations of the radius and the angle. It's just one of them is positive and one of them is negative, or, uh, or both positive or both negative. So 19 pi over 6, you might want to think of that, would be that. what would that be if we subtracted 2 pi? Um, but you don't want to count 19 pi over 6 around. So 19 pi over 6 minus 12 pi over 6, because that's 2 pi for 6 denominator, that's 7 pi over 6. So 7 pi over 6 is right here, and the radius is positive 4, so that actually is going to work. That means that this one doesn't work, because that has the same angle location, but they use a negative 4, so you end up in quad 1. Um, if you just want to double check, 19, negative 19 pi over 6, add, uh, we'd have to add 12 pi over 6 twice because it's going to not be enough to get it to positive unless we do that. So that's going to be 5 pi over 6. 5 pi over 6 is up here. If it's a positive 4, it would stay in quad 2. If it's a negative 4, it would go to quad uh, 4 down here. So that's not going to match up. So neither one of those work. Okay, so 5 pi over 6 is right here. A positive 4 is going to keep it there, so that's a no. 5 pi over 6 is here. If you use a negative 4, it puts it down in quad 4, so that's also a no. Negative 5 pi over 6, though, is right here at this location. If you want it to be the right answer, you have to, since you're already in the correct location, you don't want a negative 4, you want a positive 4, because a negative 4 will bump you across. Um, 13 pi over 6, imagine subtracting 12 pi over 6, that's going to be pi over 6. Um, that's up here in quad 1. If you keep it a positive 4, it's just going to stay there, so that's a no. If you reflect it, you're going to get the 7 pi over 6, so that would be a yes. Uh, this would be um, add 12 pi over 6 twice, so 24 pi over 6 plus the negative 13 pi over 6, that's 11 pi over 6. That would be the location of that. So that's over here. So if you keep a positive 4, it's in quad 4. If you do a negative 4, it's in quad 2. So neither one of those is going to work. And then 11 pi over 6 is right here. If you use a positive 4, it's going to end up uh, in its own location. If you end a negative 4, you're going to end up in quad 2. So both of those are out. Negative 11 pi over 6, though, is at um, pi over 6 again. So 
if you're at pi over 6, then you are going to want a, you're right here, you want a negative 4 to get you to the correct location. So it's going to be P. So notice because of the combinations and positives and negatives, usually only one from each group is working. Okay, and then the last two questions for this first part of this video, this is the last two questions on day one. Um, we are looking at changing to polar coordinates uh, that we are given to rectangular. So I'm just going to pick one. So if we want to do this, you're going to do x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta. Those are our formulas to change polar form back into rectangular. So our r, remember, is the first part. Our theta is the second part. So this is 4 times cosine of negative 2 pi over 3. This is 4 times sine of negative 2 pi over 3. Think about where negative 2 pi over 3 is. That's pi over 3, negative 2 pi over 3. Essentially, you are in the same location as um, 4 pi over 3, essentially. Now, remember, if you're a pi over 3, that means this is a 60 degree angle. So this is a square root of 3 over 2, and it's negative, And this is a negative 1 half. So the cosine here is negative 1 half which makes this negative 2 for x. The sine is negative square root of 3 over 2, which would make that negative 2 square root of 3. And that would make this ordered pair as a rectangular ordered pair, negative 2, negative 2 square root of 3. So there's the answer for C. And then lastly, 16 says change the rectangular coordinates to polar coordinates with the r being greater than 0, so don't use a negative r, and the theta has to be between 0 and 2 pi. Um, so let's just pick one. Let's do b. Locate that point, so that would be negative 8, 0. That is on one of the axes, so its radius is exactly, it's not a triangle, it's just its radius is the positive distance from zero here, because that's our origin. Um, so we know that if we wanted to find, so we have r, we want to find theta. This one's pretty easy, this is just at pi. So this would be 8 comma pi. Now if you don't have one on the axes, let's say you had uh, c. That's in quad 4, so that's a positive 2 for x and a negative squ uh, 2 squared to 3 for y. You could do Pythagorean theorem to find the radius, so that would be 2 squared plus negative 2 cubed, uh, squared to 3 squared. It's hard to talk. This is 4 plus 4 times 3, so that's 4 plus 12, which is 16. So the square root of that is our radius. So that would be 4. And if you're not uh, sure what kind of uh, angle this is, the trick is to always divide everything by the hypotenuse. And you'll see really quickly this is a 30, 60, 90, because that's 1, 1 half, and square root of 3 over 2. So this is a 60 degree angle here and a 30 degree angle down here at the bottom. Um, so since the reference angle is 60, that would be a pi over 3, and in that quadrant, that is 5 pi over 3. So this would be 4 comma 5 pi over 3. So a lot of this in this first part, the non-calculator part, really relies heavily on you knowing your unit circle. Um, so that's everything for this video. I hope that this helps you guys prep for day one.